Okay, uh, welcome back. In the previous uh, lecture, we were looking at uh, recursions and uh, also we defined uh, S of NK, the Stirling number of the second kind, uh, to be uh, a number that counts the number of uh, partitions of an N element set into exactly K blocks. So uh, at the end of the lecture, we uh, ask uh, to try to prove the following uh, result, the recursion formula that S of NK is equal to S of N minus 1 comma K minus 1 plus K times S of N minus 1 comma K. I hope that uh, some of you at least have been able to uh, uh, work this out and uh, in any case we are going to uh, see a proof now so what we want to do is to show the identity s of nk is equal to s of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus k into s of n minus 1 comma k so to do this uh, we we find a bijection between uh, you know the set of all uh, set of all uh, partitions of a set of an element set to k blocks uh, to some other uh, uh, sets right or union of sets so how do we do this now if you if you look at uh, s of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 that is saying that we have to partition an n minus 1 element set to k minus 1 element set so somehow we need to find uh, a way to partition s of n k to two sets where one of them has cardinality s of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 now how do we do this well Look at uh, a particular uh, set, let us say uh, set 1 to n. Okay, so let us say that s of nk, s of nk, it's very large, uh, counts the number of partitions. of uh, the set 1 2 3 etc n into k blocks okay so now we have a partition of the set 1 to n into k blocks now look at the the partitions itself right so we have uh, uh, if you take a partition p let's say let p be any partition so if you take this partition p we can we can check uh, you know check the block in which the element n is uh, there right so we what we are going to do is that we are going to look at the block in which the element n is there because on the right hand side we see that we are only partitioning an n minus 1 element set so we can look at the set 1 to n minus 1 uh, and uh, we have to work with that right so what we are going to do is that we let us say that let us make the element n to be special and say that look at the block in which the element n belongs to let uh, n be in the block 
Let us say B A. Now, so so we have this uh, partition uh, of the set into K blocks. Let us say that we have uh, these blocks. Right, and then we have the elements of the set, and in one of the blocks there is this element, the n, right? Now we can look at two different cases. One case is that case one. the block containing n is singleton right? because each block is a set now the block containing n is a singleton means that you know that block has so that block let's say bi is equal to singleton n right there is nothing else there Now, whenever a block contains single, you know, n as a singleton, I can remove this block, and then what do I get? I will get k minus one blocks, which is a partition of the set one to n minus one because the element n is not there in any of the other blocks, and uh, we have removed. The singleton containing n from uh, so that block itself. So we have k minus one blocks, and we have uh, a partition of the n minus one element set one to n minus one to uh, exactly k minus one blocks. So therefore, for every partition in which n is a singleton. We have a corresponding uh, partition of the set one to n minus one, in which n is not appearing, right? I mean, of course, and uh, uh, ha having exactly k minus one blocks. On the other hand, if you take any partition of one to n minus one into k minus one blocks, you can add, you know. Uh, a new block which contains singleton n, and this will be a partition n uh, in S of uh, n comma k, right? So therefore, there is a bijection between them. So therefore, all the blocks containing singleton n a singleton, right? All the partition containing n a singleton is in one to one bijection with S of n minus one comma k minus one. So therefore, this part is already accounted for. Okay, so so in this case, what we do? So we remove b i to get a partition of a partition of uh, set one two and minus one into k minus one blocks uh, since this map is a bijection as we just observed right since this map is a bijection we can uh, say that there are exactly, I think I need to uh, add more pages. Let's say one page. Okay. Okay, so now, yeah, since this map is a bijection, uh, there are 
s of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 uh, partitions of uh, the n set k blocks where n is a singleton block containing n is a singleton okay. so i should write block containing n where block of n is singleton okay so that uh, counts the first part now what about the uh, remaining so if uh, n is not in a singleton block then clearly there will be at least two elements in the block containing n right so if n is not in a singleton block remove n from the block in which it is there remove n from its block now this block is non empty and it contains at least one element right uh, this block is non empty and uh, therefore we get a partition of the n minus 1 element set into uh into how many blocks uh into k exactly k blocks yeah so if uh, if n is not in a singleton block then remove n from its blocks uh let's say bi we will get a so there is bi and then we subtract singleton n from that right so we will get a, a partition gets uh, gives in fact gives a partition of uh, one to n minus one uh, into k minus uh, to k blocks right so now this same uh, partition we would have got if instead n was a part of uh, you know, b1 right or b2 or bk so therefore corresponding to one partition in uh, you know uh, of the n minus 1 element set right 1 to n minus 1 into k blocks we can get k different partitions uh, of the n element set into k blocks because you take this partition just add the element n to any of the k blocks in k possible different ways and we will still get a different partition of the set 1 to n okay. so therefore what we have is uh is the following that corresponding to the partition of an n minus one element set into k blocks we get k distinct uh, partitions of n element set into into k blocks and in each of these we observe that uh, n is not a singleton because we have added n to one of the k blocks so therefore they are disjoint from the earlier uh, set that we were looking at and therefore we can add them right so therefore we get that uh, s of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus k into s of n minus 1 comma k and we we also saw that this one is a bijection because for every such set 
uh, we can produce a set here right and uh, for every uh, every k uh, you know every every k partition in the n minus one element set gives exactly k different partitions in uh, that and in any of those k partitions will give back the precisely the single partition in uh, the n minus one element set so therefore this is a uh, bijection and therefore we have s of n k is equal to s of n minus 1 k minus 1 plus k into s of n minus 1 comma k. So this is our uh, proof. Okay. We now <coughs> let us look at uh, recursion for k element subsets. We already uh, have looked at k element subsets and this uh, recursion relation that we are going to look at is already occurring in Meru Prasthara and in fact uh, I asked you to look at several properties of Meru Prasthara that you can find right or Pascal's triangle uh, that you can find and if you have uh, looked at you know this carefully you would have already seen uh, one of these uh, uh, property that we are looking at. So let us say that uh, you know the k element subsets of an n element set is denoted by n k here. But now let us write it as c of n k, right? C of n k, just for uh, uh, just for uh, writing it as a recursive relation, right? So c of n k is precisely n choose k, right? The number of K element subsets of uh, an n element set. Now we already proved, in fact, that right this relation that n choose k is equal to n minus one choose k minus one plus n minus one choose k. Right, we used a uh, combinatorial proof. We could also have done using algebraic techniques. Now, because we have this, we can directly use this property to write the recurrence relation right c of n k is equal to c of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus c of n minus 1 comma k uh, for 0 less than uh, k less than n with the initial conditions c of n comma 0 is equal to 1 we already observed this and c of n comma n is equal to 1 right these two properties we already observed these are the boundary conditions and uh, therefore it defines a recursion formula. Now let's uh, suppose that we did not know a formula for you know n choose k, right? We we already you know we already uh, proved that n choose k is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial into n minus k factorial. But suppose we didn't know this. But suppose we actually tried out several examples and uh, came up with a proof uh, i mean uh, not came up with a, came uh, came up with a guess that uh, uh, n choose k grows something like n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial but suppose we did not have a proof but only a guess now we can use uh, induction if we have this guess we can use induction to prove this from the recurrence relation as we did uh, in the earlier cases uh, how do we do so we start uh, the proof as follows right the base case is n is equal to k is equal to 0 and uh, we observe that c of 0 0 is equal to 0 factorial by 0 factorial to 0 minus 0 factorial which is 1 so therefore the base case holds and uh, even look at the other initial conditions k is equal to 0 or k is equal to n and uh, the initial conditions are satisfied by the induction hypothesis that uh, you know n choose k is equal to n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial if uh, you know uh, n and k are uh, like you know uh, strictly uh, one of them is strictly less than let's say uh, uh, less than one. I mean, one of them is uh, zero, or basically the boundary conditions 
right so uh, once once it reaches the boundary conditions the initial conditions are satisfied this we can verify by substituting in the formula now this uh, uh, you know you can verify it yourself now what we do is that uh, we substitute our uh, uh, you know induction hypothesis into the uh, recurrence relation so we have to prove that c of nk is equal to something but now c of nk by the recurrence formula is c of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 plus c of n minus 1 comma k now from the induction hypothesis c of n minus 1 comma k minus 1 is n minus 1 factorial by k minus 1 factorial into n minus 1 minus k minus 1 factorial and uh, c of n minus 1 comma k is n minus 1 factorial by k factorial into n minus 1 minus k factorial this is the induction hypothesis right so this holds for these two because we can we can we can do the induction uh, on the sum of n and k right n plus k so that one of them is smaller the sum is smaller then uh, we can use the induction hypothesis now what is this well this is easy this is just uh, adding up these two things with uh, finding a common uh, denominator so if you multiply uh, on the left uh, side the numerator and denominator by uh, let's say k we will get uh, k minus 1 uh, factorial becomes k factorial and uh, if you multiply by n minus k on uh, uh, no uh, multiply by n what do i want no n minus k on uh, uh, the above and below by uh, n minus k on the right hand uh, any uh, the uh, fraction we will get uh, in in below k factorial into n minus k factorial right so therefore we will get the common denominator so therefore we can add so what we will get is that we have uh, k into n minus 1 factorial plus n minus k into n minus 1 factorial over k factorial into n minus k factorial because this this quantity is n minus k right therefore uh, we have n minus k uh, yeah so what is this this is k plus n minus k is k is n and therefore we have n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial so the uh, the guess uh, works out right so therefore uh, we show that n choose k is equal to k n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial for every uh, n and k so that's it so we have a proof using induction uh, as far as we have the guess now one might ask that we already know uh, what is uh, this n choose k right even the formula then why do we even need the recursion formula right so the answer is that like uh, uh, division is much more difficult to understand combinatorially than addition or multiplication and in fact if you want to write an algorithm for example right uh, we can obtain uh, this as you know some of uh, you know earlier known values where uh, in this other uh, case we have to find factorials of larger numbers and then we have to do this uh, uh, as uh, product and uh, division on the other hand we can just use summation to find out all the values for example if you look at the pascal's triangle or meru prasthara now you see that like if you sum these two this is the identity that we have just written down these two we will get this one right Similarly, if you add this and this, you will get this. If you add this and this, you will get this, right? This will give this, etc. Right? So we can we can even write down further, right? We will say that okay, what is this here, which is going to be one, then five, and ten, and ten, five, and one, right? So this way we can continue uh, to write just by adding uh, in the you know, elements of the previous. Uh, uh, row we can find the next row easily. So 
so there are there are other uh, reasons we will uh, come to that maybe sometime in the later part of the course 